Live from the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2016. Brought to you by Mirantis. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Lisa Martin. Welcome back everyone. We are live here in Silicon Valley. This is Silicon Angle Media's The Cubes, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Lisa Martin. Our next guest is Hershon Diner, Executive Vice President, Strategic Alliances at Gigaspaces. Last year we had the founder on, he's in Israel. He's watching, <laughs> say hello, probably sleeping, time zone. Um, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. So I remember that conversation we had last year. It was actually got me really excited. I geek out on orchestration because it really is the hardest problem yeah. that people are working on right now, the smartest tech geeks. But before that, there's always a management problem. So you got to manage before you can orchestrate yeah. and automate, right? Exactly. So managing multiple clouds has become one of the main kind of, I will say, public secrets in the tech community. Mm -hmm. and clouds are great, but when you start dealing with different clouds, there's some nuances. So can you share your thoughts on that particular problem area? Yeah, I think it's a very good. Uh, first of all, thank you for, you know, for inviting us, inviting me. So, you know, it's, first of all, it's management. It's also orchestration. Uh, there is uh, many, many tools these days which are talking about orchestration. It's a bit confusing in terms of, uh, you know, the audience and the customers. So, I'm from Gigaspaces, the company behind Cloudify. Cloudify is an open source product. And what we are trying to pitch basically since day one of OpenStack, uh, and I've been here in Austin and uh, the rest of the conferences since day one, is that it's not about yet another cloud. It's not just about the infrastructure. It's not just about you know, uh, which cloud we should choose, but it's the entire stack. We are sit on top of the, you know, in the application layer, and we are looking for ways to basically do, um, allow the users to have some cloud portability, which means you, know, you have uh, various, uh, various clouds, various uh, uh, technologies like containers. In the end of the day, need, somebody needs to manage it, somebody needs to orchestrate it, and nobody knows what it should be the next Docker, the next Kubernetes in six months from now. So you need, you need to have the future proof ready for... Uh, so cloud mobility, and, and that's important. I want to dig into that. Portability. But you also said that mobility? Portability. Portability, okay, portability. portability. And you guys sit where in the stack? We are basically on top of the infrastructure. Okay. We are agnostic to whatever Below the container layer or above? We, we, are, we can integrate, we can take the Kubernetes and deploy it and manage it on any cloud. Okay. But I think the challenge is right now you have many, many silos. So you have you know, the, the Azure and, the, and, the, and the, obviously the, the Amazon. You have the vSphere with their tools. You have the Kubernetes and Docker with their tools of management and orchestration. And OpenStack uh, as well. So at the end, if OpenStack wants to go to the next level and be you know, mature even more, you just need to have something which break all these silos, something that's, you know, connect all these mess. A common tool set. Yeah, because basically. right now it's, it's, uh, it's really a chaos. Uh, if I'm a customer and we see customers every day, they are very confused because they want to have OpenStack, but the reality, they also have, you know, uh, Kubernetes and uh, native clouds. Uh, I think the last survey that I saw, almost 74% of the enterprises use at least two cloud vendors and at least, at least six clouds. So try to imagine, if you're a customer, you need to manage all of that, you need to orchestrate all of that. So that, that's a huge challenge. In terms of challenges, one of the themes today has been about collaboration. You kind of mentioned that, not just from the, the number of cloud services that, that enterprises are using, but also collaboration in the OpenStack community. They talked about that as well as a sign of the maturation. What is your uh, recommendation for enterprises that have to, are driven by the need to standardize so that they can not only uh, operationalize what they're doing, but also deliver a, a customer-centric focus. What's your advice for those customers that need to standardize? So, it's a very good, uh, very good uh, question and comment. We are dealing with open source. Gigaspace, for the last 16 years, was closed for many years. And Cloudify has been opened and open sourced to Apache for the last uh, four years. And we took it even further. We put it on a, as an open governance. 
So we took part of the product, we put it in, on Apache and Linux Foundation, and the idea is to collaborate and allow the big guys to put code inside to extend it. And I think you heard in OpenStack Austin, and today Jonathan mentioned the OpenStack Plus, without the collaboration with the big guys, you know, the Intels, and even HP and, and the rest of the guys, that they would contribute code, but also maintain it, it would be very hard to the guys to break the silos. So we basically integrate with uh, guys like from VMware, like Virealize and, and the guys from HP, uh, and, et cetera. So our advice, it's not just about just go and buy open source and it's going to be free. It's not going to be free. There are no free lunch. But the thing is that if it's open source, you'll be able to extend it. You'll be able to collaborate and you know, get advice from other even competitors. And you know, we collaborate with, uh, with our competitors uh, every day. Are you happy with the decision to open source four years ago? Yeah, definitely. Um, and we are continuing doing it and we're continuing we're pushing it uh, into the open source. Right now, there are too many open source products and solutions. Uh, it's again, again, from customer perspective, it, it confuses. You need to do some uh, some ordering of what you, you know. So what, what will what will not confuse the customer? What do you see has to happen for the customer to see a clear path to? Um, some real reality to a solution. Some, some templates, some use cases, some real kind of blueprints that you can actually take, you know, successful use case which works and just replicate it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we did is uh, contributed uh, um, some of Cloudify, some portion of Cloudify into open, open O organization uh, in the telco NFV space. And basically uh, the idea is to you know, push the code there and allow uh, the guys to, to modify and improve it. But it's not yet another standard. It's about reference implementation, about use case, that large telcos like China Mobile and Huawei and, and, uh, and others, which create real meaningful stuff with, uh, with OpenO and basically contribute it back. So if we can create something meaningful and then replicate it and allow other users to use it, that's the way to go, not yet another standard. <laughs> yeah. We right. have enough standards. <laughs> and that was one of the things actually that Jonathan Bryce did talk about today was being able to replicate the successes that companies are having in this open community. One of the things that they launched at OpenStack Summit in, in uh, April was their uh, certification program and they're now delivering more content to enable customers to break through some of those challenges with implementation. How is Gigaspace working and collaborating in the OpenStack community to also help your consumers from an implementation perspective to get around some of those things that are confusing to be successful? So, absolutely, and uh, in one hand we are contributing and you know, doing um, uh, OpenStack trainings and OpenStack, you know, a lot of deliverables. We actually, I don't know if you're aware of that, we are running OpenStack Israel for the last couple of years. So the entire event with over 1,000 people, we are running it and the idea is again to collaborate, bring the people, talk to each other uh, and get some certification. But again, it's not just about the stamp, it's about contribute back, uh, community which brings value back. Otherwise it's, you know, it's again the silo thing. Get a lot of traction on Twitter about your comment about portability. Yeah. What is cloud portability and what's the problem? That's a good question. When you, when you ask yourself what is cloud, uh, hybrid cloud, it's not just about, okay, there is a you know, public and hybrid. It's not just about we have several private clouds. It's about something similar to, you know, you're using your mobile app and you want to install it on iOS or Android mobile, okay? so. You want to be able to port it between one operating system to the other, easily. So people need to start thinking about the consumer, and separate between the consumer and between the owner, cloud owner, uh, application owner, application consumer. And once we start, uh, you know, build it properly in in, in that sense, we'll be able to port it from one cloud to the other, and then you can get to the use cases like cloud bursting, like cloud migration. Like, um, you know, things which most of the vendors are, are talking about, but in order to get there, you need to take and enable the application to be cloud 
portable. So the problem is what? What's the core problem? Um, I, I think people are more focused on uh, API abstraction. So if you have several clouds, you're trying to use some uh, common uh, denominator and, and kind of use some API uh, abstraction. But then you lose a lot of the features which every cloud uh, has today or in the future. Because you have very subset, very subset of APIs that you can use. Uh, what we are trying to do is uh, focus more on templating and blueprinting, which means you know, the application owner will need to uh, uh, use specifically the features which every cloud provides. But then it will be able to replicate it without changing the code, without agnostically uh, the infrastructure. And I have a question for you. You talked about a term that, um, like cloud, can mean different things to different people, right? Future-proof. As a marketer, I understand that that can mean it's many different cloud. things. But how? It, what does future-proof mean to gig spaces? How are you enabling companies to achieve that? Is it achievable? It is. So every customer today, and we're talking about talking about uh, two cloud vendors at least, which enterprises have today. So yeah, they're using OpenStack. That's fine. They have at least more one or two others, uh, and they want to have a checkbox. They want to make sure that they are not locked with yet another vendor for the next couple of years. Um, and this is something that again you can achieve only if you prepare yourself with the application with cloud portability. Uh, it's not just a, you know it's not a marketing thing. You really need to have future proof. You don't you see every three three or six months you see things are changing in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, cloud in terms of uh, native clouds and, and and cloud in general. Nobody knew what is Docker or Kubernetes two years ago, and suddenly it's it's everywhere. Everywhere. So what will happen in 12 months from now? So you need to that's part of the future proofing. You need to make sure that you're ready for the future within a heterogeneous environment and being able to enable that to be sustainable? Um, you need to get to there. We're not there yet. And especially because there is really a lot of chaos right now. Um, I'm, I'm not trying, I'm trying to be very realistic. The yeah, thing yeah. is that there are a lot of noise. You got to bake it out, it has to be proven. You can't just throw right. a new oh, yeah. code in there. Right. Oh, yeah. If right. you got orchestration, it has to work. Yeah, to it has to work. <laughs> has and especially, to work. especially if you're you know, dealing with mission critical systems. Yeah. Um, so do some R&D, play with some code, but when you actually want to have future proofing, it's got to be bulletproof, it's got to be protected. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. certified, if you will. Yeah, I, I, can, I can maybe touch without too many details, but we are focusing on two areas. One is enterprise and the other one is telco NV. In the telco NV, the cycle is very long. The reason yeah. it's long, you know, these carriers like the NTT and Sprint and Deutsche Telekom. Complex, old infrastructure, and they're slow moving. And they are trying to save money at the end of the day. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for them, a lot, are, of, a lot of decision points to go up for a big decision. Many decisions they are dealing with, you know, with us. They yeah. know that we, as as consumers, have very, you know, kind of high-end expectations. Yeah. And they will not release anything into the production without uh, making bulletproof. Hershon, thank you for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it. And say hello to your your, your cohort, your founder. Tell me, miss him. He's in Israel. Okay, shalom, we miss you. I'll give you the final word. What's next for Gigaspaces? What's going on for you guys this year? What are you gonna do next? Oh, uh, we have an H2 to complete. We are very uh, busy, uh, both in both business units. We just released uh, today the XAP, the in-memory computing product, into the Apache as an open source. Love that. That's a good move. We covered on Silicon Angle today, so we wrote that up. In yeah. memory's hot. Oh yeah, real so time. Yeah, and so after 15 years, we are there in the open source. And also in terms of Cloudify, we are very demanding customers. We love to hear their feedback, and we are trying to be agile and change uh, as much as possible. How's the tech scene in Israel these days? Booming, isn't it? As always, it's always very booming. similar to the Silicon Valley. It is, uh, it's, you know. it is Silicon Valley. Yeah. It's like and, Silicon Valley. And uh, you can see a lot of acquisitions there. And, uh, we well, Jeff Frick and I are talking. We want to bring the cube to Israel, so you're more watching, than welcome. Open stick, we open stick Tel Aviv. We will want to be there. 2017. You're okay. more than welcome. Hershon, thanks so much for sharing your insight. Congratulations on your big in-memory announcement and orchestration. Big problem, big problem that everyone wants to solve. You guys are doing it in open source. Congratulations. We'll do our best. Thank this you so much. I'm John Furrier with Lisa Mart. We'll be right back with more live coverage here in Silicon Valley after this short break. You're watching the cube.